It has occurred to me that amongst conservatives, there's very little understanding and plenty of awkwardness in talking about gay rights, gay marriage, don't ask, don't tell. Let's look now at helping Tom Hanks and Samuel L. Jackson, who have said in Tom Hanks's words, you are un-American if you oppose this. And Samuel L. Jackson, sophisticated that he is, added that you're misinformed. Obviously, they weren't speaking about oral sex and sodomy, which everybody knows uh, goes along with homosexual uh, behavior. There are a little deeper uh, levels of uh, homoerotic behavior. I have not actually uh, done this, but this is pretty common in the bathhouses and among gay people. Barney Frank, I'm sure, used to sell this procedure out of his brothel. Now, it's called felching. Let's give an example of how felching would come in and wh what kind of information is it that Samuel L. Jackson feels we're lacking when he says we're uninformed. Let's suppose Tom Hanks sodomizes Samuel L. Jackson, overcome with an urge to deepen his love, he goes down with his mouth and sucks out what he just deposited down there. And then, that's called felching, then he shares it in a snowball, which is a French kiss. And you can see some pictures here from felching.com. This is... um sharing excrement and sperm. Let Wikipedia and what it has to say. Something in the B comments down here that we'll get to later. What's the matter with a sergeant who likes to drink his own sperm out of another man's anus? Well, Barney Frank says nothing and um, he's the guy who told us Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were fine in June of 2008, so I'm sure we can trust a man who ran a homosexual whorehouse. Suppose, just suppose, we've all seen Tropic Thunder. Suppose Tom and Sam are on a film, and they're out on location, there's no showers, and part of the, the character for Samuel L. Jackson is to get very, very fat. He's got these huge buttocks, and he's hairy, and they're on location, and there's no showers, and that butt is just too much for Tom to overlook, and he sodomizes Sam, but he wants to go down there and out his deposit, but it's big, and the valley walls are like this. Will he go in there and get SHIT faced? No, he doesn't have this is, I think, what, what Samuel L. Jackson is trying to say to us when he says, be informed. You can eat excrement by using a straw. And Sam showed us that in the B section of Wikipedia. You see Mormons and you others who, who don't want to see the, the, the naturalness of two men sharing each other's excrement in a kiss. As I have indicated earlier, I think that the whole business of the homosexual entity as an explanation is always to be looked pretty firmly in the face by the psychiatrists who attempt to affect any great improvement in the mental health of the patient. One should determine whether this entity is the organization of a definite integrating tendencies that satisfies a need or whether it is a complex mental disorder in which the homosexuality is present because it so perfectly fortifies some abnormal mental process, some dynamism of difficulty.
where a person has felt that life is eminently worth living only in the pre-adolescent stage, when he did enjoy great intimacy with another person of the same sex, irrespective of whether that great intimacy was what may be described as on the non-genital or on the genital level, I am quite willing to deal with that person on the basis that he is engaged in actual direct pursuit of satisfaction from members of his own sex or as is in as in homosexuality as it may be easily called but where such experience is missing from a person's life then I think one is doing a great violence to the therapeutic principle to accept the notion that the person has anything like a simple drive to secure genital satisfaction by any type of behavior with members of the same sex to work on this assumption and to deal with this patient's homosexuality is to my way of thinking one of the most vicious miscarriages of therapeutic situations it takes out of the culture a group of terms which in referring to behavior carry all the culture's evaluations of that behavior you know queer and slurs that okay so you see if the patient has not found great warmth and satisfaction and in intimacy with a member of his own sex but later on is told by a psychiatrist that such intimacy is what he is after or has by his own paranoid processes come to feel that that is what he is after and the psychiatrist agrees with him then he and the psychiatrist are talking about something that in its ultimate essence merely a revolting difference between him and good people that is all in its ultimate essence, merely a revolting difference between him and good people. That, that is all. That is all. That is all. It has no meaning in terms of something that he has experienced, that he has undergone, and that therefore is a part of him. But it does have meaning of, as a particular type of horribly derogatory formulation. Thus, to attack a paranoid state, for example, on the basis of an attempt to understand the patient's homosexuality is an atrocious miscarriage of the therapeutic process. So, of course, what the psychiatrist does is to provide the patient with a new paranoid world in which the psychiatrist is unconsciously taking a very important part. And since he is much more patiently engaged in hateful activity than anybody the patient has previously found, the patient may attempt homicide on the psychiatrist one day. But other than that, I can think of no spectacular result except the passing of time. But if, on the other hand, you combine these two into some doctrine of homosexuality as applied to factors in schizophrenia, paranoid states, or what have you, then you have missed the whole point of interpersonal psychiatry, and your results will be sufficiently mongrel so that you will never be able to feel very secure about what is what. But on the other hand, you will never have any convincing demonstration of being completely wrong.